Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be 5 easy art projects you can do at home. If you do lettering and or keep a journal, I'm pretty sure you have these materials on your current stash. If you want to know more, then keep watching to see how to make these easy, simple projects that you can do right at the comfort of your own home. First up is to practice on brush lettering. I know this is a very mundane task, but I would like to remind you that when you do brush lettering, you don't just perfect it in one go. It does require a lot of practice. These sheets are available at my digital shop. I will link it down below as well. For me, it's really important to learn the strokes and be familiar with different ways on how you can do brush lettering in order for you to further improve on your skills and this is one fundamental aspect of lettering that you can master by doing regularly you can do it like once a day or once a week or twice a week or thrice a week depending on your energy and by creating space for you to actually do brush lettering regularly it helps you also stimulate your creativity and come up with different ways that you can further enhance your brush lettering for me this is the basic brush lettering alphabet that i do but there are many other ways that you can definitely explore this is very much derived from my cursive handwriting so that's what i am practicing on regularly i am also using just a brush pen which you can use and find definitely in your stash if if you do a lot of brush lettering or modern calligraphy. Next up is to decorate your notebook cover. This is a, such a no frills activity. If you have a blank notebook lying around, it's great to whip out all your stationery and lettering pens and stickers and just go ahead and decorate it. I'm just using a pocket-sized moleskin notebook here and I wanted to go for like a vintage floral themed cover just because I wanted to have like a daily log of some sort. You know those Korean style um, notebooks that you see in bookstores and stationery stores? I wanted to sort of channel that and I use a lot of muted tones to sort of encapsulate the overall theme. I also wanted to blend it in with the craft notebook cover and I am just here adding some stickers, washi tapes, and cutting up different elements to blend the whole thing together and of course lastly i am labeling it with a daily life log label just so i can write my to-dos in this tiny nifty notebook that i can use for my daily to-dos Next up is to make a collage. If you have a lot of magazines or newspapers lying around, I would suggest this as a great way to add some pizzazz to your journal. I love collage in general because it helps me get creative and it helps you also exercise your creativity in such a way that it helps you become more aware of what colors go together, what styles go together, and how to mix and match different patterns. I am just using a couple of recycled things from magazines, packaging from chocolates and different elements to create different levels for my page. I went for a floral theme as well but I wanted also to incorporate different patterns so I'm cutting up patterns from booklets and random stuff that I find. I actually have a drawer of all my magazine cutouts so that I make sure that I won't waste them so it's also useful for you to have like a little collage corner so it's a great way to exercise your creativity and I'm also using a lot of printouts and stuff that I have not been using for the past few years so I think it's such a great way to just exercise what you know and be able to apply it. And what I like about collage journaling is there's no right or wrong way to do it. You can just layer it thoroughly or you can space it out evenly depending if you're going to write something or you're just gonna make it a collage as is. I'm also incorporating the washi tapes because these washi tapes are very much related to my theme and I love cutting them out. I find it also therapeutic. It's also just kind of intimidating to cut because you have to get the shapes right but I am not that type of person I'm just like okay I'm just gonna cut it up stick it and work my way around it and yeah I think this is such a great way to exercise I keep saying exercise but to really get yourself into a creative zone you can do this every day you can try different color themes I've worked with different colors and different styles to sort of create different collage effects and 
sort of portray what I want in a certain page or a spread. I'm also using just a slim notebook for this, just so I don't have to fill in the whole page. And that's also a misconception with collage. I feel like the more you put into it or the more you overthink it, the complicated it gets, the complex it gets. So I just try to keep things at a minimal and not think too much it's one of the rare th times that i actually don't think a lot when i do creative things so i guess that's a good thing so i'm just adding some last minute additions to sort of round up the whole page the printout's actually from ernst heckel's work um i have his ebook so i decided to print some out and use it for this collage Next is to paint a postcard. I'm pretty sure you have extra watercolor paper lying around. If you don't have, you can also use cardboard stock. I'm using a postcard size Canson Moval here and I'm just going to go ahead and do some freehand painting. So I'm going to use watercolor for this and you can use different sizes of paper. I just find a postcard to be simple and if you want to do something regularly, it's also something that you can commit to because it's not that big, it's just small. And I'm just going ahead and freehanding this piece where I am going to paint sunflowers and a quote. So what's nice about you know making postcards is you can actually use these to stick them up on your wall. Apart from that, you can also practice. And it's a great way to stay motivated and just create something. And, you know, when you create something, you don't really have to create something big. You just have to do something. And I think it's a really good way to also get your creative juices flowing if you want you can dedicate every day where you just paint a postcard with different themes like different types of flowers different letters different quotes and i think that's going to help you become more in tune with your creative process and who knows you might learn a thing or two more the more you actually get into the whole act of painting and really getting into it figuring out different color schemes trying out different techniques and personally though the postcard size for me is pretty small because i do my letters pretty big so i just like to use postcard size ones to letter short quotes or little elements that sort of encapsulate what i want to portray in an art form in an art piece so i'm just brushing these up and adding more sunflowers i find that sunflowers are well, they're obviously my favorite flower and I like how it evokes some sort of positivity so I just wanted to letter this quote called stand tall because I feel like we need a bit of that encouragement at this point. So this is the final product that you can display on your wall. Last but not least, you can also make your own bookmark using the same watercolor paper or if you're just going to use uh, markers, you can definitely use cardboard or recycled cardboard is actually pretty good or anything that's pretty much durable that you can insert in your books actually i'm not a fan of magnetic bookmarks so i still use a lot of paper bookmarks if i don't have paper bookmarks i end up just using polaroid photos but in this case i've cut it up in such a way that it is lengthwise and it's easy to use as a bookmark and i'm just going to paint some sort of um coffee themed bookmark and what's nice about this is you can go crazy with what you can do here. You can paint, you can do patterns, you can do collage. But I think collage for this small of a paper is not really suitable. I'm just lettering coffee because we all know that coffee is life. And I just wanted to fill up every single area of this bookmark just so I can have, you know, a fully designed bookmark and i'm not just going to use watercolor you can actually go ahead and use your brush pens or fine liner pens if you're into doodling or tangling zen tangling you can go ahead and go crazy and just do whatever and add this like pattern to your bookmark because again it's your bookmark and you can use it to insert it on your book i'm pretty sure you're reading something right now if not get on with it so yeah that's it for these five easy art projects let me know which one you've tried and you want to try and thank you so much for watching this video bye